Hi, David Bizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. This is episode 62, part 2. Remember, in part 1, I talked about the um, Ultra Pro heads and were they just some of the greatest flowing small block Chevy heads ever? Right? Uh, uh, Ultra Pro's flow figures show. 440 CFM at about uh, 750, 800 lift. Well, at the time I did that video, I didn't have time to go through all the flow testing and things like that. But in this part two, you get those numbers. These are the heads here, or one of the heads here, that I'm talking about. These are going to be for our big cubic inch engine, which I think I mislabeled as a 468. is actually a 454. Uh, brain fade there, I always remembered that was probably, that combination was 468. Anyway, what I'm going to do is just uh, clean up all this here from where it's had new inserts in it and things like this. And... Uh, cut the seats just on one cylinder and mold it right and it'll probably be one of these cylinders and then down the road I'll flow it our first move here is to bring the chamber up to date also it needs to be bigger because we are putting it on uh, an engine much bigger than it was originally intended these heads here Don did for uh, classes which required 400 cubic inches uh, or uh, 355. Now I'm going to cut this away here and to do that I'm going to cut a 1.325 radius cut on this quench area here. So I put a valve in with a uh, center drill there so that I can center this up and we simply mark it out like so. So that's my first move. I'm going to cut the chamber back to there. So why am I doing this if all I'm doing is going to mold the port? Well got to start somewhere. I think getting that metal out the way first is a good first step. Right, but I'll, I've still got a lot of work to do on the chamber finessing it because like I said this port here was just a trial one and that includes the chamber. Well here we are, chamber cut away, at least roughed out from it so you can see what it's going to look like. We've still got a lot of detail work to do around here but I'm going to do that after I've got the ports done from the seat down. Well here we have the finished ports. I'm not going to bother to show you up through the ports because you'll see the form after I've molded them but they're ready for molding. But there is one thing here that I want to uh, uh, point out before I forget, right? When Don originally did these heads, they were for a 50 or a 55 degree seat. Now I'm going to be using something less than that, right? So the area immediately after the seat has to be formed to suit. Don has got this form here ready for a steeper angle seat than that. Now I'm going to show you something here, right? that is pertinent. Let's lift the valve by a quarter of an inch. Right, now then, you'll see that I cannot get this around the corner. Right, let's lock that there. Won't go. Now then, let's try the same with this one and you'll see what I'm talking about here. Let's lift the valve a quarter of an inch. Right, now then look, see? It's 
just check that right goes right round and what I've done here is I've cut this area here right this part of the chamber here so that the area available to the valve at that point coming past the chamber is the same as the area between the seat on the valve and the seat in the head now this might only be a small thing here but it adds significantly to the low valve lift now we are building a street motor right so somehow or other I've got to get the maximum flow from these valves everywhere in the lift range and then we select the cam based on the flow figures of the head right now it's time to get molding now I have gone through the basic sequences of ops necessary to mold a port but I'm briefly going to go through what I'm doing here right just to reinforce the situation what I've done here is I've used my comp cams uh, TDC measuring uh, uh, finding uh, fixture which normally bolts to the top of the block I've just bolted it on here and loaded the valve into the seat now you can use a spring but I got all this set up so I just bolted in it's quicker and with my fussy fingers and arthritis putting the spring on is not the easiest thing anyway that's the first move your next move is to find out what using your spirit level what will get the head level I've got this piece of wood here and a, uh, t a tall um, socket at the back which just levels it now you need to have it pretty level uh, especially across this way and you need to use the minimum number of pieces to do it because we're going to have to lean this port over when we start pouring because the, it will form an air bubble at this part of the port because it's going uh, like this or it will have a tendency to not flow well into there so I'm going to lean the head this way and half fill the port then take it back and put it on that socket so that's my next move Well, I have all the port molding uh, mixture carefully mixed up and remember don't stir it so fast it creates bubbles you're going to make some it's unavoidable now I'm going to tip the head this way and pour in a bunch of this stuff uh, this port is about 290 cc so it's going to take the whole amount of this uh, port filler here right so I'm pouring it in there I may have to mix up a little bit more from the other uh... Well, here's the port poured. That 290cc port took a little bit more than one of those uh, cans of um, uh, filler there. Uh, port molding fluid right so I had to open a second one and pour about another 20 cc's to fill it up now what I want you to notice here is the clean top to it I've wiped around and stopped the fill just prior to the end of the port that gets a nice tidy edge to the port right you'll find it's very difficult to trim this stuff tidily so that's a point there now I've got to leave it for about 20 hours to set so we'll get to the point of pushing the port out in about 20 hours oh and I think I forgot to say be sure to wet the port down with WD-40 that doesn't mean flood it that means wet it down so that the mold pushes out okay if you followed episode one I did say that there was a step in the uh, short side turn of the port 
It's actually a bit bigger than I said. I, I thought it was 10 or 20 thousandths. Turned out it was more like 60. Anyway, Don at Ultra Pro did say that with a step that big, I might not make the uh, flow numbers that uh, they show on, on there. But um, here's the shape of the port. Now I want you to look at that. Uh, of course, it doesn't give you much of an indication of how much different that port is than a stock port. So let's look at 180cc regular small block Chevy intake port. Notice any difference? Yes, that is a big port, right? Now let's have a look at a big block Chevrolet port. This is a 315. And I'll put it next alongside this one here. And you can see that the Ultra Pro small block port is pretty big. It CCs out at about 290 something, right? Here's the raw flow curves. Other than the numbers, these won't mean a lot to many of you. What we see here is 409 CFM from 900 on up and 278 CFM peak flow on the exhaust. To put those numbers into perspective, here's how they compare to a multi-race winning set of dart heads I ported a while back. The thin lines are the dart heads. Let's just do a summary here. Some of you may be confused of the fact that my flow figures are way short of what Don Lucito at Ultra Pro is getting. Well, two reasons for that. If you expect me, even with my 60 plus years of experience porting, to hit Don's flow numbers right off the bat, think again. Don is one of the premier head porters on the face of the planet. Why don't we read more about him? He's not real good at getting publicity, that's why. But he has been responsible for the likes of most of the work on the Yates head. The D3 or C3 Ford heads are his uh, brainchild, not Ford's, right? And uh, the winningest days of one well-known pro stocker were with Don's heads. I'm quite a ways behind him. That's because this is a preliminary porting job because one doesn't get to pick up heads like this or head castings like this every day of the week. So I'm being cautious. So you'll note that my port is 280 cc's compared with Don's 290, I think I measured it 293. So it's not out to size yet. And I think the area that I'm still shy of is in the bowl area, which is the most critical part of this port. So that's one thing. Now, the other thing that I want to say here is that even if these heads did not flow any more than they are now, we are flowing like a big block with these small block heads. There's still a lot left in them, I'm sure. But look at it this way. These heads have the potential for good big block flow numbers from a small block Chevy casting, right? That is the start of making horsepower, but only the start. Right now, I've just showed you the uh, figures for Don's heads compared with the uh, uh, Dart uh, 195 heads, which, by the way, are going on a 396 street motor, right? They've already been dyno tested on a race engine and they kicked butt. Now they're going on a hydraulic roller cam street motor. Well, it's not decided that it's hydraulic roller. I may use a comps uh, 
one of Comp's street roller grinds, but we'll see about that. Anyway, what I'm going to do here is make a point that flow figures alone are only a small part of the picture. In the next episode, I am going to show you all the other factors that play a part. Remember, if you're looking at flow figures, 75% of the data that you could have got from the flow bench has been thrown away. And only 25% of it presented. That 25% does not guarantee power. It's just a good way to get there if you know what you're doing. Part three of this cylinder head deal will show how, why, when, and where these heads from Ultra Pro really pay off, right? And I'm saying really pay off. So let me just add one more thing here. My next project is going to be the demonstration of this wheel timing in the cam on Sean's out of the picture 350 motor for his Model A. Hopefully see you on that very shortly. Thank you.